it was the sighted people pointing out to a young blind person, you're doing a behavior we deem as not normal in society, stop. <coughs> Hello there. Uh, you know, this video is not something I really had planned. I was just having this conversation with somebody yesterday and I was like, I need to sit down and talk about this with my internet friends because I think it's a really important topic and that is masking your blindness. Now the term masking has been used within the autism community for a very, very long time and I've increasingly heard it used amongst other disability communities and in particular, I'm hearing it a lot within the blind community and I, I hope, I know I have a lot of people in the autism community who follow me, please share your opinions. I hope you don't mind that we're kind of sharing the term now. I'm not necessarily sure we're using it in the exact same way as the autism community. So you can kind of maybe enlighten us in the comment section below about how you use that term within your community. But I do feel whether it's the term masking or another term, we as a blind community or other disability communities, we need some kind of word like this because it is a helpful, tool to be able to share and express and I am not making this video to encourage blind people to mask or not to mask. I'm simply sharing my experience and I know that I certainly every time I hear other blind people talk about it feel very validated. I think I had lipstick on my teeth but I if I did it's gone now so <laughs> we'll keep going. Yeah, I find it I find it very validating to to feel like I'm not alone in this feeling or this experience. And so that's really why I'm talking about this. And frankly, like I do think there are some pros to masking at times and there's certainly some cons. And that's really what I want to discuss. I want to discuss what it is to me, how I do it, why I do it, and what it feels like to do it. Uh, I also think it's really important to share that in my experience, at least when I was younger, I'm not sure about the youth, the blind youth of today, but when I was growing up, my blind friends and I were taught to mask. Non-disabled people told us to do these things. These are not things that many of us naturally did. Um, these are things that we were taught to do to fit into society and to s stand out less. I remember when I was at the school for the blind or when I was at blind camps, they would have like secret words. The staff would have secret words with the blind people um, so that when they were doing a behavior deemed as a blindism, they would like be like banana to like stop them from doing that behavior and point out to them that they were doing that behavior in a more like private way. But ultimately we all knew what that meant. We all knew what that was. It was the sighted people pointing out to a young blind person, you're doing a behavior we deem as not normal in society, stop. And so many disabled people were trained and taught to do these things. I also wanna say another reason I'm doing this is not only to validate other blind people who might have these experiences, but also because I think it's important for loved ones of blind people or for those who are around blind people a lot, perhaps you work with blind people um, as a part of your job or something, to understand that some of these masking behaviors do come more naturally than others or to some people over other people. I think it depends on your level of blindness, on how long you've been blind, on whether you were born blind or went blind. Um, so I think it's very nuanced, it's very individualized, and I think it's just like something I wanna call attention to to non-blind people who are around blind people a lot, that for some people, these behaviors might not be masking, right? For some blind people, these things might just be like very natural behaviors for them to do. And then for other blind people, these are behaviors we've either been trained to do or have just naturally learned to do as a coping mechanism. And that's ultimately what it is for many of us. For me, it is a coping mechanism. I often try to mask my blindness or limit how blind I appear to other people as a way to fit in better. And I don't want to be perceived as less than. I don't want to have people look at me and think I'm incapable. And so I work so hard to put all of my energy into making things look easier than they are for me. It's exhausting and draining. But I do it to cope. I do it to fit in. I do it so that people treat me better. That's what sucks. I've been shown by society historically that that is the case, that when I'm able to more seamlessly not look blind or not behave the way we've deemed blindness to be, people treat me better. People treat me more normal. And so I often have found making myself less comfortable 
is worth it to make other people more comfortable simply so they treat me more human. That sucks. And I hate that. And an example of this, like just like a very easy example of this, is eye contact. I put a lot of effort into trying to make eye contact with people when I speak to them because I feel that if I'm making good eye contact with them, they're gonna focus on our conversation and they're gonna maybe forget that I'm blind. Whereas if I let my eyes just wander the way they sometimes really want to do, they're gonna be sitting there looking at me thinking, oh yeah, she's blind. And they're gonna be focusing on the ways in which we're different instead of the ways in which we're similar. And obviously this isn't true for every sighted person. Not every sighted person is going to be like that. Some sighted people won't care that I let my eyes wander, but lots will and that sucks. And this is an example of a behavior that when I could see more or when I had just more recently lost my vision, it was still very natural for me to make eye contact. Because when I was younger and I could see, I would look at people because I liked being able to see as much as I could of their face when talking to them. And after I went blind, I was just so used to that that it came naturally to me. But the, the longer I am without being able to see people's faces, the less natural that behavior is and the more of a decision it is that I'm making actively to do that. And that means the more effort I have to put into doing that and the more tiring that effort is. And when you're blind, every single thing takes so much more focus because as a sighted person, sight is the sense you rely on the most. And so when you're missing the sense you rely on the most, like it can be exhausting, especially for somebody who was used to being able to see and has maybe more newly become blind or is consistently losing their vision slowly and constantly having to readapt and readjust to their, to their newfound vision. Other examples of when I might choose to mask or a reason I might choose to mask is for something like safety. For example, maybe I'm in an Uber with a male driver late at night on my own. That is a time when I feel potentially like I could be unsafe or I'm vulnerable or at risk for something to become unsafe. And so I put all of my energy and effort into appearing as sighted or, as, or less disabled than I am because I feel like maybe if this person doesn't, under, doesn't know the true extent of how blind I am, they, they won't think I'm as vulnerable as I actually feel. And so, for example, that's a time when I think masking is, is a good decision. Like, I, I feel good about that. I'm like, yeah, I should. I don't feel bad about making the choice to mask because I think I'm keeping myself safe. And in those moments, I'm glad I have the ability to do that. But other times it's, it's like to avoid an uncomfortable or awkward or lengthy or invasive conversation when I simply don't wanna have it. You know, if I'm at a store and they're like, oh, look in the mirror. When I'm like trying something on, sometimes I'll just turn and look in the mirror just to avoid needing to be like, well, actually I can't see. And then having this either uncomfortable conversation because now they're flustered and they feel awkward and they start saying weird things because they feel uncomfortable or they start asking questions and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to spend 20 minutes answering your questions, but I love to educate, so I'm going to. And so sometimes I just do it to avoid the conversation. And, you know, for me, masking can look anything like working really hard to stabilize my eyes and make as, as good eye contact as I can, to turning and looking in the mirror, to looking at somebody's phone when they try to show me a picture of their dog when I'm in line at Starbucks to show me how much it looks like my dog. Um, there's lots of things that it can look like for me. It can be anywhere from like essentially pretending to be sighted or at least implying I'm sighted or not admitting I'm blind when maybe I should to like very small, small behaviors where I'm still fully presenting myself as blind, but I'm limiting kind of symptoms of that blindness. Like I mentioned eye contact, for example. And sometimes for me, making eye contact is super easy and natural. If it is, if I am not tired, I'm really energetic, it's the beginning of the day, it's really bright out, um, so my brain is getting some kind of stimulation from light, then making eye contact for me can feel super natural. But there's also times when it really doesn't and it takes a lot of effort. For example, the opposite of those things. If I'm really tired and stressed and I'm at dinner at the end of a long day and there's a tiny flickering flame of a candle and it is dark everywhere else and all my brain wants is that visual stimulation and my eyes just wanna glue themselves to that candle, it takes everything in me to lock eyes with somebody or, I mean, 
I can never really lock eyes with somebody, but you know what I mean? Like really look at them versus letting my eyes just like be glued to this light that is over in the corner. Or it's a, there's not even light, right? Like it's a very dark environment, like a party and it's loud and it's really hard for me to hear people and it's very dark and like sighted people can see, but there's no light for my eyes to cling on to. My eyes just want to like bobble because they're trying to find something to stimulate, something to hold on to, especially in an environment that is so overstimulating for me and can feel a bit uncomfortable. It's, it's like, it takes that much more effort. And I've learned environments where I feel like it's more important for me to, to mask or it actually feels more comfortable for me. Like I said, in, a, in an experience where I'm doing it for something like safety, that feels good for me. But I also have learned times where it's like I'm with my close friends and family. I can let myself just fully let those things go and I don't have to try. And I think for me that's been important is learning when it seems like I should be doing it for my own self, not for others, but for my own self to make me feel better. And when I can just not drain my energy in that way and, and conserve my energy. And it can be really hard to take the mask off when you go years of your life doing these things and you start to finally try to give yourself permission not to and to find moments where you don't have to it's really hard it's really hard to stop and i want to i guess give you permission to to not feel the need to do it all the time like if you're trapped in that cycle because other people have made you feel that you need to do those things or because you feel pressure to do those things it is draining, it is exhausting. I'm here to validate you in that way, but to tell you like, you can find moments when you don't have to do that. And another form of it for me is like, sometimes when there's a really visual joke and I'm in a group of people and I like completely didn't get the joke, I'll just laugh, I'll just pretend. So I just fit in. So I don't have to be the one in the room that didn't get it. And for me in those moments, it's almost like a coping mechanism to feel less alone to feel like I'm not as different as I do feel. So sometimes it is something I'm doing more for me than other people, and other times that's something I'm doing for other people more than me. It's really interesting. It's it's such like a web when you start to realize you're doing it and then start to think about the times you do it and why you're doing it in those different times. It's It takes a lot of self-reflection, I think. Sometimes for me, like being my full blind self feels too vulnerable and it doesn't feel good for me. And so in those moments, like masking is worth it. But in other times, it feels so draining to do it that it doesn't feel worth it. I think one like overwhelming major negative of doing this, if you do it all of the time, is that people can misunderstand, number one, like how blind you really are or, or how much help you might benefit from. And so you constantly have to advocate for yourself even more than you than you would have to. People don't understand how much energy and effort you're constantly putting into doing it and how draining that is at the end of a day. I think in the past few years, I'm learning to have a more balanced approach. I'm learning when, when I feel like I should do it and when I really don't need to. And finding that balance feels really good for me. I feel like that's all I really want to say on the topic right now. Um, I would love to hear your experience whether you are blind or whether you have some other form of a disability is this something you feel you do um and i don't know i just think it's interesting to have a conversation about this so let's talk about it in the comment section below um i'm really intrigued to to hear your perspective and your experience with this um, and what you think about it. Because like I said, um, I'm not sharing this to say do or don't do it. I'm just sharing my experience and perspective on it. And I, I always find it really validating when I hear other people talk about it. It makes me feel less alone in an experience that can feel really isolating. So thank you guys for watching this video and sticking with me. Um, I did mention blindisms at one point in this video. So if you'd like to learn a bit more about that, you can click over here and watch that video. I did it years ago. Or if you would like to hear about my tips for loved ones of guide dog users, you can click over here to check out that recent video I posted. Love you guys. Bye.